<clears throat> well, good morning. I was trying. I was having a hard time trying to put this mic on my ear because, as you can see, I think I have the smallest ears in the world. <laughs> well, I am Brother Lemuel Domingo. Lemuel, as I was talking to some of the ladies this morning earlier, you can find my name in Proverbs 31. And some theologians say that Lemuel is the pen name of King Solomon when he was younger, when he was still messing up with things. Anyhow, uh, my last name is Domingo, and if you speak Spanish, uh, it only means, simply means Sunday. And uh, my country is Philippines, 8,000 miles away from here, Southeast Asia, composed of 7,000 islands and 120 million people, imagine. But anyhow, I am from there, and uh, here in America, I've been here for four years now. I'm graduating this year from the college for the four-year program of biblical studies. And I thank God for the privilege. Church, thank you for giving me the privilege, Brother John, for uh, reaching out to the college and asking if anybody is interested for helping a church pulpit supply, because that's what I do, and um, that's how I serve the Lord, and that's how the Lord is training me right now. I am 26 years old, and as, as what mentioned earlier, God gave me the desire to preach when I was 16. God gave me this burning desire to preach His Word, the Gospel of Christ, and serve Him in the ministry. And eventually the Lord brought me here studying in Marietta Bible College under the leadership of Dr. Myron Geiler. And I thank God for the privilege for giving me, allowing me, enabling me to be able to read His Word in English, friends, I don't speak your words, your, your language. Your language is not my original language. My language is called Tagalog or Filipino. And it's, it, in my country, we have more than 70 dialects. So imagine, but it's hard. You know, my English can only last, I believe, for five minutes. So <laughs> give me five minutes and I'll be done. No, I'm just joking. This morning will be on Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, and while you're opening your Bible there, two days from now, we will be celebrating one of the annual events in the world, which is Valentine's Day or the Love Month or Love Day. And to this month, some people are already celebrating the, the, this, this event, which is love, celebrating to be loved, celebrating by loving, celebrating by giving. And I believe... You people have heard lots of messages already about the greatest love that we can hear about or we can listen to, which is God's love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I believe some of us here has gray hairs and you are experienced. I don't want to say the word, but... You are experienced in hearing such great messages about the greatest love of God. And God commended, but God commended, showed, demonstrated His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that's why this morning we're, go we're going to try and take a look from this text of Scripture how deep or how high the love of God is through the depth of the suffering of his son. One of the greatest preachers that I know, and as far as I read, Charles Spurgeon, he said, we can only measure the height of God's love through the depth of the suffering of his son. And this morning, we're going to look at this text, this scripture in Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22 from verse 39 to verse 46. Remember, friends, this is not the cross yet. This is, this is the night before the cross. And if you are familiar with your Bible, with this account in the Gospel of Luke, you know what Christ went through the night before He was crucified. And before we read the, the text this morning, let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Father, we come before you this morning. Lord, you are sovereign. You are almighty. You are the all-powerful God. You are the all-knowing God. God, before the foundation of the world, you have loved us. And this morning, you have... This, is, this was in your plan for us to be here and to learn and listen to your word being preached. God, I pray that you open our hearts and our minds to see, oh God, how deep your love for us, your love for the church, for your bride. God, help us to see, oh God, how Christ went through the suffering just to show how he loved his, his church. God, be with us this morning. Open our hearts. And through the help of the Holy Spirit, Lord, I pray, help us to understand and help us to do something about it. Be with us all in Christ's name. Amen. Luke chapter 22, verse 39. And before we read this, we want, I want us to think about these two questions in which our message will revolve around. First question is, what do we learn about Jesus? What do we learn about Jesus? And the second question is, what do we learn from Jesus? I believe, number one, the, the answer to this question, what do we learn about Jesus, is the depth of his suffering. It is a well that's so deep that we can only see the bottom of it through the light of the Scripture. And what do we learn from Jesus is the importance of prayer the purpose of prayer. Luke chapter 22, verse 39, the Bible says, And he, Jesus, came out and went as he was wont. Want, that word want. In the King James Bible, it's used, it used the word want. But today we don't use the word want anymore. And you will not say, I will go to my basketball want today. Today, we use the word practice, or we use the word custom. So here, in the scripture, and Jesus, Luke wrote, and he, Jesus, came out, which was his practice every time they have a gathering, Jesus and his disciples, because during this time, if you're going to read the whole chapter, he had a gathering with his disciples, gathering in which they had the feast of the Passover. I don't have to explain you all these things, but this was a feast that they usually celebrate every year in which they commemorate the time when God brought them out of Egypt through Moses. This is how they celebrated having this breaking of bread, eating the unleavened bread. And here, as you can see here in this chapter, you can also read here the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper in which Christ broke the bread and told the, his disciples, this is my body broken for you. And then he took up the cup and said, this is the New Testament in my blood. So after all these events, Jesus with his disciples, this is what he usually do. He goes out of Jerusalem and go to a place where he usually pray, to the garden. Here in Luke, the Gospel of Luke, he did not mention the name of the place. He only said, at the place. But in another gospel, which is Matthew, Mark, and John, it was mentioned there, the name of the place, which is called the Garden of Gethsemane. Luke, his main audience was Gentile people, Greek-speaking people. They would not be able to understand what the term Gethsemane is. Here, if I will speak in my language, you will not be able to understand me. So Luke did not mention the name of the place, but Gethsemane, it simply means olive press. This is a place during their time where olives were crushed under a huge millstone to extract the juice and extract the oil eventually from it. So here, as you can see now, you, if you're having a clearer picture, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is literally being crushed. The place where olive is being crushed under a huge millstone is the same place where Jesus is being crushed during this time, this night before the crucifixion. And the Bible says, And he came out, went out east side of Jerusalem, going down a valley called Kidron Valley, 
go, and then going up to the Mount of Olives here. It says, to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples followed him. And inside that Mount of Olives, on, th on that place, there is a place called Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane. And here, I want us to enter into that garden through the Scriptures and see what happened to Jesus to understand the depth of his suffering. As I said earlier, our first question is, what do we learn about Jesus? And what we will learn from him this morning, though you know it already, you have heard about it already, is the depth of his suffering. And he was at the place, Garden of Gethsemane. And he said unto them, to his disciples, pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them. He went a little, a little farther inside the garden, about a stone's cast. It is a distance where it's not so far and it's not so close that you can still see and hear the person. And kneeled down and prayed, saying, Listen, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Friends, imagine this morning, imagine Jesus Christ kneeling down inside the garden of Gethsemane on his face and praying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. In, in, in our college, our president, Dr. Myron, he, he teaches us, he said, he's saying, you preacher boys, in his big voice, preacher voice, you preacher voice. The Bible is a book of words, he said. And you need to understand each and every word of it. You need to research about every word of it. And you need to understand, friends, ask the Bible when you read the Bible. What, aren't you wondering, why would Jesus say, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Why, why, what caused him to say, Father, if thou be willing, and prayed, remove this cup from me. And Luke, Luke is an experienced physician. He is a doctor. And through his experience, he chose his words carefully. And through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he chose the word agony. In verse 44, it says, and being in an agony, what caused Jesus to be in such agony, in such under great pressure, in this place where olive is being pressed under a huge millstone, being crushed? Why, what would cause Jesus to say, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me? It's interesting because this is the second time the, the word cup is mentioned in this chapter. The first was when he took the cup and raised it up. He said, this is the New Testament in my blood. And then here, not a literal, literal, literal cup, but a cup. What is cup? What is this cup? What, would, what is this three-letter three word that would cause Jesus to be in, an, in such agony and say, in such great stress, anxiety, and great pressure, for him to say, Father, if thou be willing, please remove this cup from me. And in, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus prayed twice and said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. What caused him to say that? Friends, I believe Jesus was seeing something in that cup. Friends, remember, we interpret the Scripture by the Scripture. And when the Bible is talking about cup, it is talking about your portion. Your portion. The psalmist said, the Lord is the cup of my salvation. The Lord is my cup. The Lord is his salvation. Friends, our portion is salvation. But here in the cup, what was Jesus seeing inside that cup? Friends, I believe when Jesus looked inside that cup, he saw sin inside that cup. All the filthiness that came into our minds, wicked imaginations, all the ungodly actions that we have done through this body, all the unexhorting words that came out from our mouth and offended people, blasphemed God, all the things that 
cause all the death and pain around us today, all this shooting around America, people dying, wars, rumors of course, everything, friends, everything was inside that cup. And when Jesus saw it, it caused him to say, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. This is the depth of the suffering of the Son of God. He was in such agony. And that caused in his, his sweats. In verse 44, it says there, He prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Friends, imagine Jesus Christ kneeling down while his sweat became drops of blood. Maybe you have seen a photo of him where he's kneeling down, praying, and then the pass, light of the Passover moon shining on his face with a peaceful face. Friends, this is, that, this is not the image that the Word of God is trying to show us. He was on his face. He was suffering. He was in great agony. He was, in, he was under such great pressure. He was literally being crushed because he saw what was inside that cup. Friends, let me tell you this. Inside that cup was my sin. Inside that cup was your sin. That caused Jesus' sweat became drops of blood in which today doctors have a term for it, which is called hematidrosis. Now, you don't, you, you don't make me explain that because I'm not a doctor. But it, it only means that the, uh, the capillary, capillary vessels or veins pops they burst because of great pressure because of great stress and this is what literally what's what's happening to christ he was in such great pressure that caused his capillary veins to burst because he was stressed greatly in mind physically his soul is he said in matthew that his soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death Friends, when he saw that cup, he saw sin inside it. He saw your sin and my sin. And imagine Jesus, the Son of God, one of the persons of the Trinity, of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. These three persons, one authority, one power, equal in all, they were in perfect fellowship. From past eternity, their fellowship was never severed, never broken down. Friends, imagine Jesus with the Father. This, was what, this is the most important for him, the fellowship with the Father. And when he saw that cup, he saw that their fellowship would be severed because of sin. Because from past eternity, Jesus hated sin. And he saw in that cup that what he hates most, he would become. For he who knew no sin became sin for us, as what Second Corinthians says. Jesus became sin for us. And what is the wages of sin? What is, what is the effect of sin? The wages of sin is death. Yes, physical death. But not only death, death is what? Separation. Physically, more than a year ago, I lost my dad through this, because of the virus. I met my dad when I was 16 years old inside the prison, and we've never had a, really a good relationship with each other. But when I came here in America, he came out of the prison, calling me, FaceTiming me. I had a good time with him, giving me some advices. And I was hoping when I come back to the Philippines, come home, I, I would have a, a free time with him outside of prison. But, well, God is sovereign, it happened. He died because of the virus more than a year ago. And we were separated physically. I will never see him again. And I hope if the Lord really saved him, if he really trusted Christ, I will see him in heaven. But now we are separated physically. And you know you have families and friends that you love. Are, you are separated from them now physically. But it's not only physical death that the Word of God is talking about. It is also talking about spiritual separation and death. The wages of sin is death, the death in hell, separation from God, 
in eternity, from it, friends, forever you will be separated from God if you don't have Christ in your heart today. And here, when Jesus saw inside that cup that there is sin, your sin and my sin, all our filthiness and wickedness and transgressions, inside that cup he saw that he will be separated from the Father, that their, their, their fellowship will be severed. And as you know, when he was on the cross, what did he say? Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that which is to be interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You see the clearer picture now that Jesus knows in his omnipotence, he knows everything. He knows what will happen to him on the morrow, that his fellowship with the Father will be severed. His perfect fellowship from eternity past, he was with the Father, good fellowship with the Father, perfect fellowship, Godhead, and yet because of sin, this fellowship will be severed. This is the depth of the suffering of the Son, friends. This is how deep the love of God is for us. How deep the love of God is. What do we learn from Jesus is the depth of his suffering that caused him to say, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Because he knows what, what's going to happen to him. Not only the depth of his suffering, but the depth of his submission. He was humble. He was humble enough to be born in the likeness of man, took the form of a servant, and dwell with sinful men, and then eventually go to the cross of Calvary and die for our sins. This is the depth of the suffering of the Son. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven in verse 43, strengthening him. Friends, he was such under great pressure that no man can help him, that he needed spiritual help, that he needed an angel from heaven to come down, sent by the Father to minister unto him, to help him, because he could have died there. He could have died there because of such great pressure. Friends, number one killer today is stress. You know that in America, the number one killer is stress that caused people to have heart attacks and all. And Jesus was such under great stress. He could have died there in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's why he needed help, spiritual help, and an angel came down, helped him, strengthened him. This is the depth of the suffering of the Son because of our sin. When he saw that cup, he saw my sin and your sin. Think about that. Meditate upon it. We always forget things. I am 26 years old, but I always forget things. When I have exams, I forget what I reviewed. When I go to the car, I forgot that I have forgotten something in the dorm. Then go back again. Oh, 26 years old, imagine. But we Christians... We always forget things. And sometimes we need to be reminded what the Lord has done for us. Every day we need to be reminded what the gospel is. In 2 Corinthians, it says there, their inner man renewed day by day. We need to be renewed day by day. And today I hope through this text of Scripture, you will see the importance of the suffering of the Son, that you will appreciate what the Lord has done for you, what Christ has suffered for you, how great the love of God is, how deep it is, and how high it is. Friends, we are enveloped with the love of God, and I hope through the text here in this morning, you will be reminded what Christ has went through, how deep was His suffering. Not only that, what do we learn about Jesus is the depth of his suffering and his submission. But also, what do we learn from Jesus is the importance of prayer. He said, Father, in verse 42, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, 
That's a very powerful word right there. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Today, folks, you will hear a lot of messages about praying to God and telling Him what to do. Tell God, do this, and God will do it. Command God to, to do this, and God will do it. Friends, th- take that image of God in your mind, trying to make God like a genie and commanding God to do what you want to do. Friends, our God is not that God. Our God is sovereign. He is overall. He is all-powerful. And He will not be submitted under the will of man. He can never be submitted under your will and my will. Friends, Jesus is God, remember. 100% man, 100% God. And yet, He said, nevertheless, this was His prayer. This was the greatest temptation that He had ever faced. If thou be willing, remove this cup from me. I believe this was the greatest temptation that Jesus has faced because this was the night before the cross. He could have turned his back and never die on the cross. It would not make him any less of any God. No, he would still be God. But he said in his humility, the depth of his submission, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Folks, our will should be submitted under the will of the Father. Your will, sometimes it's hard for us to say and end our prayer and say, Lord, let your will be done. Especially when we're praying for people who are sick, families whom we loved. Yesterday, we had a prayer time in the college. We had a teacher there taught for more than 20 years. And now he's suffering. He suffered. He suffered from cancer. In his brain, heart, back, and he, he, he was in a very bad condition. And of course, we Christians, we pray, Lord, please heal this person. Please, Lord, take out the pain. Take out the pain from his body. But sometimes it's hard for us to say, Lord, may your will be done. May your will be done. And then last night, the Lord took him. I'm glad now that the Lord took him because now he's not suffering anymore. But friends, us Christians, sometimes we need to say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. We need to be submitted under the will of the Father. This is the importance of prayer. He said to his disciples, pray that he enter not into temptation. They had a long day. They had this Passover, this feast, and they, they were tired. And and their temptation was to sleep, to rest. And the more I see it, the more I read this text, the more I see myself in the life of the disciples because I know if I I was there, I would have slept too because I would be tired. And Jesus said, pray that he enter not into temptation. The importance of prayer, friends, is this. Prayer is our defense against temptation. Every day we are tempted. Every day you are tempted. I am tempted every day. But friends, being tempted is not sinning already. You're not, you, have, you have not sinned yet when you are being tempted. No. Taking part into the temptation, that's when you sin. When you say yes to temptation, then that's when you sin. That's why Jesus said, pray so that you will not enter into, into temptation, so you, so you won't have any part into your temptation, and their temptation was to sleep. Because here is the importance of prayer. Jesus knows that tomorrow he will be crucified, and his disciples need spiritual strength because they've been with him for three years. They've been listening to him. They were being taught for three years, traveling with him for three years, they had, they had this great bond with each other. And Jesus knows when he will be captive, will be captured and brought to be judged by Herod and Pilate and brought to the cross of Calvary. He knows that it's going to affect his disciples, these apostles. And he said, pray, pray. because, And then when he came back, Jesus saw them sleeping. Three times in, in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus saw them. They were sleeping. Jesus prayed, came back, and they were sleeping. 
woke them up and said, pray. Came back, Jesus prayed again, came back. They were still sleeping. Friends, that was their temptation. And Jesus asked them and said, why sleep ye? Why are you sleeping? This is a, friends, this is not a question that you, you can answer. But Lord, because I'm tired. Jesus knows that. Jesus knew that they were tired. He, he has been with them the whole day. He knew that. He understand that. This was a rhetorical question. Jesus is trying to make a point that you, disciples, you need to pray because you need spiritual strength. Because tomorrow I will be captured. I will be brought to the cross of Calvary and I will die for your sin. And you will be scattered. Friends, sometimes we need to choose spiritual strength rather than our physical needs. Job said that the word of God, he took it, I'm just paraphrasing, but he said that the word of God is more important to him than his physical needs. Friends, he, look at this, friends. We have the word of God in our hands today. Here, this is our food. This is what we need we are already in the month of February. I don't know you. You don't know me. I don't know what your life is. The Lord knows and you know. But friends, where are we now in our devotions? Where, where are we now in the Bible? Are we still reading the Word of God? In other countries, there are places where they do not allow the Word of God. And I can see it happening in America eventually. Through the lenses of an Asian boy 26 years old, I can see that America is becoming darker and darker, and it's going to get worse. And friends, while we still have the chance to read God's Word and be fed from it, friends, let me tell you this. Appreciate God's Word. When you read it, see the beauty of it. Friends, this is how we are being fed, through the Word of God. And we talk to the Lord through prayer, this sweet fellowship which is called prayer. This is the importance of prayer. What do we learn about Jesus? Is the depth of his suffering and the depth of his submission. What do we learn from Jesus is the importance of prayer and the purpose of prayer. The purpose of prayer is to be submitted under the will of God. May we think about these things today. And if you are here today, you are someone who never heard about the gospel of Christ, and someone who, has, who have not trusted Christ yet, let me tell you this. Jesus died for you. Jesus suffered for your sins. This was the night before Jesus is going to the cross of Calvary, that hill of skull, Golgotha, where he would die for your sin. Friends, Jesus died for your sin. And inside that cup, your sin was in that cup. And Jesus saw your sin was in there, and he died for that cup. He took it. He drank it. And the Bible says he became sin for us. And God showed his love toward us in that while we, we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for you. And let me tell you this, friend, if you are here and you haven't trusted Christ yet, I beg you, please, put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. And for us Christians... Again, this is just a reminder for us that how, the deep, how deep it is, the depth of the suffering of the Son. As I said earlier, it's a well that is so deep that we cannot see the bottom of it. We can only see it through the light of the Scripture. And you will not see the light of the Scripture if you don't read the Scripture. Friends, please, I beg you, read your Bibles See what the Lord is trying to tell you. This is the depth of the suffering of the Son and the importance of prayer. That's what we learn from Jesus. When you are being tempted, pray. Amen? Every day, every day, when you wake up, pray. You know you will be tempted every day. <laughs> we are tempted every day from every corner, every side. Temptation is just there, the fairy darts of the devil just attacking us, trying to make us, bring us out of the will of God and try to sin against God. But friends, our defense is prayer. 
Spurgeon said, he who does not pray does not know the will of God. Friends, we need to know the will of God, and we can only know that through the Scripture and through prayer. May this message has been, a, I hope that this has been a blessing to you. I, I just want you to see two days from now, celebrating God's love. This is how, the love, how God showed us His love through the depth of the suffering of His Son. Let's pray. Father, I come before you once again. We, we thank you, Father. I thank you. God, thank you for what you have done for us. God, thank you for sending your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on the cross of Calvary to die for my sin, sins in which I can never pay. I could never pay, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for saving someone like me who is wretched, sinful, lover of darkness more than lover of light. God, thank you so much. God, I give you all the glory, Lord, because you deserve it. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you for you are a loving Father who loves his children. God, I pray that you be with us, be with Abundant Life Baptist Church. God, bring, bring them to your will all the time. Lord, I pray that you lead them, give them your word, and I pray, God, that you be with us today and keep us safe, and we give you all the glory once again in Christ's name. Amen.